when you write it. Um, but uh, I completely forgot about introducing myself, by the way. <laughs> um, my name is about poetry. I've actually uh, published a poetry book. It's called Dancing Fingers. And I, uh, I published it with my older sister, Adriana. And um, my first book is called Flying Fingers. It's a book of short stories and tips on writing. So poetry is one of my favorite uh, things to write because it's very versatile. What that means is I can take it anywhere, I can write it anywhere, it's pretty uh, easy to, you can just sit down and write a poem in a couple of minutes, whereas starting a story requires a lot more commitment. I love them both, they're, um, I think they're equally amazing, um, but poetry is definitely a whole lot easier when you're on the go. So, this is uh, the dictionary definition of poetry, literature and verse, literary works written in verse. But I want to hear what your definition of poetry is. What do you think of when you hear poetry? What, uh, what do you think poetry is? What does poetry mean? It's writing, okay, so can we be more specific? Is there anything that sets poetry apart from like stories, for instance? To show passion in something? Yeah, a lot of times po poetry can be really passionate about a subject. Uh, the writer might care a whole lot, but there are stories like that too. There are uh, people who have written stories that are very passionate about topics. But definitely in poetry you see the, the writer's voice sometimes coming out uh, a little more than sometimes you do in stories. It really depends, but you do, you do see a lot of self-expression. What are some other things that make poetry different from uh, like stories or just um, regular writing? I'm sorry? A lot of it rhymes. Yes, although that's not necessarily, not all poems rhyme. In fact, a lot of very famous ones don't. A lot of people prefer um, to write free verse poetry, which is um, not within a structure and not having to necessarily rhyme. So for instance, my sister, who co-authored Dancing Fingers with me, all of her poems, um, they don't rhyme, or they might have a rhyme, but it would be like accidental. She doesn't try to rhyme words. Uh, and it ends up being, she writes really good poetry. Um, and then my poems, I do try to rhyme words. So, and also, I don't know if you can see it, I'll zoom in a little bit. But when you look at poetry that's free verse versus poetry that's in a structure, then you'll see what it looks like. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> that was a um, terrible zoom while zoomed in. Um, well, this is um, an example. I'll step up to the camera here. So these are some poems of mine, and you can see uh, what what is um, in common. What do all these poems have in common here? It's dark. We can't see. We can't see. Yeah, you don't only see the words. You just look at kind of the um, structure. Is there anything in similar, like uh, at the stanzas, like that part? The titles are capitalized. The titles are capitalized, yeah. So I have titles on all of them. Uh, what else? What else do these have in common? If you look at like the way the words are arranged. Uh, okay, the pictures match the poems. Well, more specifically, if you look um, like at these, um, these, uh, sorry, it's a little hard. Uh, these parts, like here, the way the words are arranged, these are stanzas. They're like uh, kind of the poetical equivalent of paragraphs. So a stanza is kind of like um, uh, the way that you break up a poem. If you have three stanzas in a poem, um, and a lot of times I'll have four lines in each stanza. So you can see that my poetry, I, I kind of structure it out, and I have titles and um, this, this kind of structure. And if you look then at my sister's poems, then they're like this. They don't really have, they're not really broken up into stanzas, and they don't have titles, they have numbers. So if you look at just the shape of the poetry, it's a whole lot different. So, and that's, you know, my sister likes to write that kind of poetry, and I like to write this kind of poetry. So who's to say, this isn't poetry, this is poetry, or this is poetry, this isn't poetry. Um, it's really up to you to decide, what do I think is poetry, how am I going to write poetry? So you could decide to write poetry that doesn't rhyme, that has no structure. You would decide to write poetry that does rhyme, but doesn't have too much of a structure. Or there's really so many different ways to write poetry, you don't want to put yourself into a box. Uh, so, yeah, poetry has a lot of different definitions. You can uh, describe it in many different ways.
And let's talk about why you want to write poetry. Well, poems can be however long or short you want it to be, so you have a lot of choice, but poems are really good vehicles for expressing emotion. So if you're feeling really angry about something that happened recently to you or to others, you might write a poem. If you're feeling on top of the world and you're just uh, you know, super excited, you could write a poem. And so I've written lots of poems where I'm feeling in all of those different moods. And so if you look at um, in Inside Flying Fingers, uh, in uh, my poetry book then I have all these different categories and a lot of my more sad ones that are sort of reflective are in a more serious part, reflections, and then I put all my funny ones uh, that are about, that are kind of making fun of things or that are making fun of myself in the ridiculous part. So poetry is a great way to express your emotion. Now raise your hand if you've ever been stuck trying to think of ideas. Have any of you ever been stuck trying to think of ideas? I see right hands. Probably almost everyone has at some point or another been stuck when they're trying to think of ideas. I know I've written essays and I've just been like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to write next. So to help us think about topics for poetry, we're going to look at some possible inspirations. Everyday life, current events, and pictures. Inspirations. You can get lots of inspirations for poetry from the things you see around you. Trees, houses, coats, sidewalks, plastic containers, snowflakes on the ground. How would you write a poem inspired by a coat? You could make a poem about the type of things you like to wear. You make a poem about the things, kinds of things you like to wear. Yeah, very good. You could make a poem uh, saying, you know, I, I love my pink blouse, and I love. And you could talk about your coat and your blouse and your pants or whatever, and why you like to wear it. Maybe what kinds of memories you have. I remember wearing. Those, oh, I remember wearing that jacket as I went down the roller coaster at Disneyland. I remember, and so you could like kind of go into your memories on the different items of clothing. That's a really good one. Or you could talk about a coat that used to belong to a family member, and it still kind of smells like them a little bit, and so you have that memory. Or you could talk about a coat that you just bought, and then you got it lost, and you're looking around for it, and you hope that you find it before your mom comes home. So even just within one poem, you have so many different ideas for so many different types of poem. poems. You could have a almost kind of list-like poem where you're listing off the, the clothes that you really like and why you like them. You could have a poem that's maybe kind of serious or a little bit nostalgic or kind of uh, looking back in a way, that, um, an item of clothing that reminds you of a family member. Or you could have a kind of funny poem, a narrative poem that tells a story about how you lost your coat and you're looking to find it. So there are so many different types of poems you can uh, get just from looking at one thing, like a coat. Um, I want to uh, tell you a little bit about some of my own poems. I get inspirations really everywhere, literally from trees, houses, coats, sidewalks, plastic containers, snowflakes on the ground. These might seem like not very poetic kinds of things, but by looking at a tree you can think of what it would be like to live under it, or uh, which I wrote a poem about. There's all sorts of different possibilities. You don't think that's exciting enough, you could always exaggerate. So if you wanted to write a narrative poem, and a narrative poem is like telling a story in poem form. So instead of writing down a story, you tell it through a poem. And this tradition of telling stories through poetry has been going on for many, many years. Really, uh, since people started being telling stories, there would be these really long poems that would tell stories. But let's say you just wanted to write a normal short narrative poem that told a story. So you think you know what you want to write about. You want to write about, uh, or I want to read about how my sister was throwing a pancake up in the air, I'm making this up, uh, and it landed right on her head and there was all this gross dough and raw, uh, or raw um, batter running down her beautiful dress that she just bought for $300. So if I wanted to write about that, um, I would say, okay, well that's really dramatic, but there's a few things though that aren't maybe that interesting because she was just sort of like going like that. It wasn't like she was throwing it up in, uh, all the way to the ceiling or anything, uh, really, when I think about it. So you might be able to exaggerate. So you could exaggerate something to make it seem really funny or really gross. Um, so for instance, if I were writing about uh, someone who couldn't stop picking their nose. 
I of course would exaggerate it because you could always stop picking your nose. But let's say I said um, that this person would pick their nose every second of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year. And so we all got tired of seeing them put their finger in their nose or something. <laughs> that would be kind of disgusting, right? But obviously, I would be exaggerating that. So uh, if you have something you want to write about that you would really like to make bigger or more funny, you just add, uh, you kind of exaggerate. You stretch the truth a little bit. Not a good idea to do in real life, but you can create some really funny poems that way. So poetry tip number one. If you want to write about something, you want to make it more gross or more funny or more dramatic, just exaggerate. Poetry tip number two. You can get inspiration to poetry from animals. Raise your hand if you have a pet. Great. Uh, I sadly don't anymore. We used to have a guinea pig. We used to have two guinea pigs, but one passed away and one we had to give away uh, because we would travel a lot. So, uh, but animals are great inspirations because animals do really funny things. Have any of you ever watched America's Funniest Videos when they have like a dog special? I see some raised hands. Uh, yeah, America's Funniest Videos, they always, you might notice, every show usually, it's rare to watch a show and there not be an animal in it. And so animals can be incredibly funny or sad or happy looking or all these different expressions and funny things that animals do, you can write poems about it. And they don't necessarily have to be funny poems, like about how the time that your dog pooped on your neighbor's carpet that she had just bought or something like that. They could be kind of sad poems, like if you lost a pet and you were really, really sad about that. Or if you were um, just super happy about getting a new pet. Well, let's talk a little bit about the funny part. Uh, do any of you have pets who do really funny things? And if so, what do they do? I'm sorry? He'll bite my foot. He'll bite your book, okay? So is it a dog, a cat, what kind of animal? Oh, your dog will bite your foot. Okay, your foot. Okay, so a dog that bites your foot. So you could write a poem about the marvelous foot-biting dog or something and kind of make it uh, really exaggerated, like how uh, your, your dog is magically attracted to your foot or something and write about all the times he's done that. What are some other funny things that your pets do? I'm sorry? A laser. The cat chases a laser. Okay, so a cat chases a laser. So you could write about that. The cat and the laser pointer. What are some other things? My dog will run into the screen door. Okay, dog running into the screen door. So what you want to do is think of all these images that come to your mind when I ask what are funny things your animals do. Think about them and make a poem. And it's not that hard. You could just sit down and write uh, write up a few lines. They don't have to rhyme, they could rhyme, they could be free verse, they could be in stanza. So for instance, I wrote this poem, Cow. I don't I don't have a cow, I've never owned a cow, but this is what I thought about uh, a cow might be like. Um a little while back. Um, so it goes, I have a most annoying cow who lazes in the sun. She torments every hen and sow and has a lot of fun. She gives no milk at all and moves away at night. Even when she's in her stall, she always picks a fight. Eventually, she ran away. Freedom, a great allure. Away, away from her stall and hay. But she left a great deal of manure. Okay, so that's a poem about uh, the cow. And so it gives us, you know, this really persnickety cow who never gives any milk, who always picks a fight, runs away, and of course, as her leaving present, she leaves a nice big pile of manure or poop. Uh, so that was uh, just a poem about cows, and so I had this kind of image of this really nasty cow, and uh, you know how when you're like, I don't know, how old are you guys? Ten. Ten, most of you are ten, okay. Um, well, when you're like six and seven, maybe some of you still know, you're really obsessed with like gross stuff and poop and boogers, <laughs> so that's okay, you can write about that, uh, and I did with this cow poem. Uh, it's a good idea not to make your poetry entirely about that, but there are lots of people who have reached 
great success by writing really funny poems about gross things. So uh, it's perfectly legitimate. You can use animals as great inspirations in poetry. These inspirations from animals will probably never go away. Uh, just because there's so many animals out there. If you finish writing about a cat, you can start writing about a lizard. If you finish writing about a lizard, you can start writing about a chimpanzee, and on and on and on. So, animals, exaggerating, what next? Well, we can tap into our personal experiences as sources of inspiration for poetry. So you might say, well, I have a really boring life. Well, chances are that your life is actually pretty interesting. Just think about everything that's happened to you since from when you can remember. There's probably a few really interesting or shocking or sad or funny or whatever things that have happened to you over that period of time. So for instance, I can, uh, a few experiences of mine that stand out. Uh, one of my favorite memories is on my birthday, my grandma sent me two big boxes because she lives far, uh, in, uh, far away from me. Uh, she sent two big boxes as presents and it said, don't open until October 15th, which is my birthday. And so they would sit in the garage and I was just waiting and waiting and my birthday couldn't come soon enough. So I tore open the boxes and they were these like really long, heavy boxes. Isn't it, does anyone want to guess what was inside? A poetry book? A poetry book? Not quite. That would have been a pretty nice present. But actually what I pulled out was something like I'd never seen before. It was a five pound Hershey's chocolate bar. Five pounds, like that, of solid chocolate. And she didn't just send one, and now I sound like an infomercial person, but she sent two. So that was um, my uh, kind of amazing experience. I think that might make a good poem because it's a kind of an interesting experience. Not everybody receives these giant, two giant five pound chocolate bars for their birthday from their grandma. And so uh, then I might even write a poem about trying to finish all the chocolate or what we did. We made a lot of hot chocolate. We you know, broke off pieces. It actually did get finished within a couple of years. <laughs> and so that was a personal experience of mine. What are some of your personal experiences? What are interesting things that have happened to you that you could turn into a poem? How would you go about turning it into a poem? Yesterday when we went to Sacramento. Okay, you went to Sacramento. Great. And so what was interesting about going to Sacramento? Was she talking to me? Yeah. Oh. Uh, the Gold Rush. The Gold Rush? Okay, great. So you went to Sacramento and you learned about the Gold Rush. So you could write this really good poem out, like, standing in the footprints of where miners walked before and maybe kind of like feeling all the history uh, in the air. That would make a really um, interesting, beautiful poem. Uh, so tap into your personal experiences as sources of inspiration for poetry. So like in my book, uh, Dancing Mirrors, I'm trying to find um, one of the poems that I wrote. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. Um, so Common Nonsense is my section on writing ridiculous poems. So I, um, let me find a short one. Uh, okay, so for instance, this one, um, which is uh, called Talk Show, and actually I wrote this a long time ago, and what was happening, um, within the space of a couple months, I actually went on a lot of TV shows, so I was really happy about that, and I wanted to write uh, a poem about, uh, called Talk Show, and my mom was super interested on getting me on the Oprah show. And I actually, I didn't get to go on the show and meet her, which is a sign I really am sad about now that she's leaving, but uh, I, they did show a video. So I was super in, uh, interested in being a talk show most of the time, and so I wrote this poem called Talk Show. The lights are on, the floor is clean. Welcome to the never before seen. Focus on the couch right there as talk show host comes down the stair. A controversial Channel 4 chat about the star's boots, her stockings, her hat. Bring on set the newest guest, fingernails cut and nicely dressed. What's the newest diet book? Why don't we take an exclusive look? The cameras are rolling, the TV's live. Come on, talk, and don't be shy. Who applauds the absolute most for our eloquent talk show host? So that poem, Talk Show, is sort of inspired by getting to meet a lot of talk show hosts and watching some as well. And uh, a little bit, I was a little bit... Um, uh, also making fun of how, how many diet books are talked about on talk shows quite a bit, if you've ever seen one. So tapping into personal experiences, writing poems, uh, to kind of channel whatever you're thinking.
Uh, another great one using pictures. So if you uh, if you look up pictures online, if you see pictures in, in an album, if there's posters maybe that you know about, uh, they, these are great sources of inspiration. History is another one. So uh, what is something you guys have learned about recently in history? I'm sorry? James Marshall discovered gold. Okay, so James Marshall discovering gold. Um, so you guys are start, uh, starting to learn about the, the gold rush and the gold mining, it sounds like that. Uh, that's a really interesting period of time. So this would make for a lot of good poems. And actually, I'm sure there are people who have already written poems and you can uh, add to that number. Um, so writing poems on the gold rush. So what, uh, how might you write a poem about the gold rush? What, what could you write about? Okay, so you could write about where you found gold, how we found this. You could even write from the perspective of Marshall if you wanted. You could um, imagine that you're the person who found gold. Or you could um, kind of narrate, like a story almost, uh, in poetic form, the process. Uh, you could, or another interesting poem is you could imagine to, that you were a stream or a mountain or something, and you were watching what was happening and the people gathering and wondering what was going on. So you could almost write it from the perspective of like the land. That would be kind of an interesting take on it. Uh, so yeah, there's really lots of different creative ideas, uh, ways you could write about the gold rush. So now that we've talked about a few different places where you can get your inspirations from, where you get all these ideas, we're going to quickly talk about types of poetry. So there are many types of poems, um, lots more than I can cover in one session. But we're going to focus on haikus, sonnets, free verse, and limericks. Before you decide which to write, you should know about your choices. So haikus are, uh, they're a really interesting form of poetry. They have 17 syllables in three unrhymed lines of five, seven, and five syllables. So sometimes when you're writing a haiku, you might have to kind of clap out the words to see how many syllables they have. And the haiku is very strict structure. 17 syllables and is distributed um, in uh, five, seven, and five. I'm forgetting. Uh, five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the second line, five syllables in the last line. So haikus, you see a lot of haikus that are about nature or a season. Um, Basho was a famous haiku writer from Japan. Uh, there's a really good haiku about frog, a frog even. So haikus can be written about many things, but because um, of, of how short they are, a lot of times they'll be used to kind of zoom in on something specific or uh, talk about something beautiful. So this is a haiku I wrote just to kind of show the syllable uh, progression. A lone chirp, the bird, left behind in its own nest, welcoming the dawn. Sonnets. Uh, so sonnets are 14 line rhyming poems of set structure. Raise your hand if you've heard of William Shakespeare. Okay, so William Shakespeare was a super famous writer. He uh, was from England and he wrote a ton of these plays and poems. Have you ever heard of Romeo and Juliet? Okay, raise your hand. So uh, William Shakespeare wrote that. Um, and a lot of other ones, Hamlet, and uh, all, all of these different ones that you'll probably eventually read in school. And so he wrote, uh, often within the play or just separately, sonnets, 14 line rhyming poems of set structure. So he was very famous for these. And a free verse poem does not have any fixed poetic meter, and it's usually unrhymed with lines of different lengths. So the American poet Walt Whitman wrote free verse. And free verse is essentially where you sit down and you write your poem. And you don't necessarily say, I'm going to have an A, A, B, B rhyme scheme, and I'm going to have stones as a four. You don't really sit down and say, I'm going to have all the structure. You just write um, pretty much whatever comes in your mind. If you have a rhyme, then you rhyme. Uh, you can decide to write a rhyme in free verse. Um, it really varies. Limericks are five line poems that are usually humorous, and the rhyme scheme is A, A, B, B, A. The English poet Edward Lear wrote limericks. Um, I wrote one. I wrote one here to show the rhyme scheme. I thought that you would like the pie, for at least I had the will to try. But yes, the burnt crust is too hard, and the filling is just lard. At least I didn't make you die. So this is a limerick, um, kind of apologizing for this burnt lard-filled pie. 
And um, landmarks are often used to write uh, about funny situations or scenarios. So, reviewing, we can get inspiration from everyday life, current events, and pictures. We can exaggerate to make our poems more exciting. Uh, we can draw inspirations from animals, from people, from experiences, from history. Uh, so what we're going to do now is think of a topic to write a poem about. So uh, what, what do you think we should write our poem about? We're going to write one together. Okay, you think we should write about Sacramento? Okay, so is there, um, so um, let's get some more specific ideas. How would we write a poem about Sacramento? Should we write about uh, a specific dog, one particular dog? Should we write about dogs in general? Should we be kind of complaining about dogs? Should we be talking about how much we love dogs? What, what kind of angle should we take? Love dogs. Okay. So uh, we're going to write a poem about how much we love dogs. And uh, should we have rhyming? Should we not have rhyming? What's the deal here? Rhyming. Rhyming. Okay, so, rhyming poem about how much we love dogs. Uh, I'm just going to grab a chair, and we're going to start it off. So think of a few reasons. Why, why do we love dogs? Because they what? They like our house? They like our house? Sorry, it's coming through from the guard. They guard your house. Okay, great. So why don't we start with that? I'm going to open up a Word document, and we're going to uh, sorry, I just looked down. And we're going to start with a few of the things that make us really like dogs. So they guard our house. What else? They like to play. Okay. Okay. Well, Microsoft Word is not responding. I have to restart it. Uh, so they guard our house, they like to play. Anything else? They're brave, okay. And one more thing? So we're talking about how he's guarding the house, or how the dog can guard the house. And saying that the dog's really fierce and brave in guarding the house. He bites to the kids. Okay. Um, so yeah, we what we can do is have an... Um, yeah, we don't do Brian every line. I think that's actually good not to do because that like, frees up a few things. He bites anyone who comes. Um, do we write this? No, we can, uh, I, I can make this bigger, so you can, you can write this down as we go, but things will change, like I might backspace or move things around, so you might find yourself having to cross out. So, 
Okay, so let's uh, focus first here on the garden house. So my dog is fierce and brave indeed. He bites anyone who comes. But when, when we want him just to, uh, just to play, he can be a lot of fun. Okay, so my dog is fierce and brave indeed. He bites anyone who comes. But when we want him just to play, he can be a lot of fun. So let's continue here with the playing part. So what makes the dog so fun? Hmm? So what makes the dog so fun? When we want him just to play, he can be a lot of fun. Let's continue off of there. What else can we say about that? So ideas, what should the next line be? Well, I remember somebody said uh, that the dog really likes bones, so could we maybe play off of that somehow? Yeah. How? Okay, so if you think we can use the bones, what do you do? When, when you have a bone and you have a dog, what do you do? And you want to play. Teasing? Okay. So, I, uh, my dog will do, my dog, uh, uh, let me think. My dog loves to, um, chase, hmm, I'm trying to think of a good word. My dog would do anything for a bone. Even stand up on his, uh, even toes. Okay, great. My dog would do anything for a bone, even stand up on his toes. When I dangle, uh, or when I, mm, let's see, when I dangle it above his head, he, what does he do? He jumps. Oops. He jumps how high? He jumps three feet in the air. Okay? So something we've noticed here is my dog would do anything for a bone, even stand up on his toes. That doesn't quite rhyme, it sort of sounds like rhymes, but uh, when I dangle it above his head, he jumps three feet in the air. And I want to reinforce an important point here, which is it doesn't have to rhyme every single line. You can decide that you want to rhyme a poem, but you don't have to put too much thought in it. Something would sound better just unrhymed, but you can do that. So what else makes the dog so great? I'm sorry? My dog would run after you if you win. Okay. If uh, my dog is very close to me, he follows wherever I go, chasing me with a wagon tail. And he. Mm, Uh, let's see. Stomach and keen nose. Okay, so that, that also, here we described a sign that we didn't mention earlier, which is that dogs have very good sense of smell with a keen nose. Okay, and let's have um, one more thing. Uh, so what, what should we, what, what is the one last thing that we should say we love about dogs? Maybe we can end on a funny note. Any ideas? I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, so that might be a funny thing to end on. Um, what else? So let's say we need four lines. How should we write this out? My dog will go and go to his living room. Maybe there's only one thing about my dog. I wish I 
wish he used the loo. Okay, this is sort of more of a British term, but it's basically saying, I wish he'd used the bathroom. Because, you know, it's really hard to, uh, if any of you have a dog, you know that it can be hard to train them uh, not to go all over the carpet or something. So, I wish he'd use the loo. Because this morning I walked, uh, because this morning I woke up to the lovely smell of, okay, maybe <laughs> I could leave a dot, dot, dot there and you could assume what it rhymed with, but um, what, what, does, what does this person wake up to? Dog poop. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm not going to read that out right now, but here, we'll start with the whole, with the whole poem. So it's starting with all the great things about dogs, and then it's like, okay, well, yeah, when they go inside the house, not so great. My dog is fierce and brave indeed. He bites anyone who comes. But when we want him just to play, he can be a lot of fun. My dog would do anything for a bone, even stand up on his toes. When I dangle it above his head, he jumps three feet in the air. My dog is very close to me. He follows wherever I go, chasing me with a wagging tail, Hungry stomach and keen nose. There's only one thing about my dog. I wish he'd use the loo. Because this morning I woke up to the lovely smell of poo. Okay, so there we go. Poem uh, that is about dogs and how much we love dogs, but also, <coughs> excuse me, maybe about one of their weaknesses, which is, of course, uh, not not all of them are necessarily um, potty trained. So. Uh, Poems, you can write them about anything, dogs, cats, how much you love dogs, how much you hate dogs, uh, poop, boogers, <laughs> as said, the whole range of gross stuff. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people, and when I say a lot of people have actually been really successful writing funny, hilarious poems, that's actually true. Uh, Jack Polutsky was like the children's poetry laureate, and his poems are very good. They're all about funny things. Uh, Shel Silverstein is a favorite poet, poem, that poet of mine, and he also wrote lots of poems about really ridiculous situations, like building a boat that have a bottom, uh, other uh, very famous poems. So, when you, write, when you write poetry, you want to make sure that you're writing about something you're interested in, a topic that matters to you, and you don't have to start out and say necessarily, I'm going to write about dogs. You could write a poem from a word that comes in your head, or from a or seeing a flower in a vase, or pretty much any situation. So remember that poetry writing can really take it anywhere. You can write about many different things. You don't have to rhyme. Remember that a lot of our stanzas did not rhyme. And you can write different kinds of poems. I encourage you to try writing rhyming poems and non-rhyming poems. See which one you like better. Uh, if you need to find rhymes, there's like rhyming dictionaries and stuff. Um, and then also the different types of poet poetry quickly. I don't even remember what a haiku is. Don't tell me how many syllables, but just what is a haiku? Okay. And you remember what a haiku is? No. Okay, well a haiku uh, is a great form of poetry to start out with because it's three lines. You will have to figure out the um, syllables. But haikus are a form of Japanese poetry and they have three unrhymed lines, five, seven, five syllables. Um, other kinds of poetry include sonnets, 14 lines, um, limericks, uh, free verse poems. We pretty much just wrote a free verse poem, which meant we sat down and we wrote it kind of whichever way we wanted to. Free verse poems are uh, really good because that way you don't have to say, I'm going to have this rhyme scheme and work towards that. But it's also good to explore all kinds of different poetry. Limericks, for instance, try writing a limerick, a haiku, a sonnet, in addition to free verse poetry. So once you get started writing poetry, it just comes really naturally. At first, you might say, oh, my poetry is really horrible. But my first poetry, it was pretty bad. I was like making all these ridiculous rhymes. Um, so I would be saying something like, uh, I love my sister, she loves me, which is, you know, great, perfectly fine. It was a little bit too much like a reading card. Uh, I love my sister, she loves me. When she's sick, I bring her tea. Uh, when she's sad, I give her hugs. When she's curious, I show her bugs. Okay, so it was not like super bad, but it was, I was making up the bugs rhyme totally just to rhyme with hugs. So, write things that you really feel, and I 
do love my sister, but uh, that poem was maybe not the best thing to make. Uh, write things that you feel. Write about um, what you know and what you don't know. Poetry can be a great way to learn about things and explore things. So, I hope that you enjoyed writing this poem, and uh, remember that you can really write poetry about anything you want to, and however you want to. So, uh, do you have any questions? How old were you when you started writing poems? Uh, I was probably, uh, let me think, um, I probably wrote my first poem around five, but I didn't really get into poetry until when I was eight, because my mom sort of bribed me. She was like, I'll buy you all the poetry books you want if you try writing, because I was really, oh, uh-oh, all disconnected. Hey mom, they just disconnected. It like totally disconnected. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I think maybe it timed out or something. But to quickly finish, uh, I just really love poetry. My mom said, hey, I'll buy you all the poetry books you want. And you start writing poetry because I love to read poetry. And I started and I pretty much got hooked because uh, poetry is very fun and easy to do. Uh, so. One more question? Yeah. Okay, good. But what are the total of poems did you write? Uh, I have written over 200 poems, I think. I don't know of an exact number. But inside Dancing Fingers, there's probably 100, I'm thinking. Uh, and then also my sister's poetry. That's a G. Uh, oh, how old are you? I'm sorry? How old are you? How old are you right now? I am 13 years old. I turned 13 uh, last October, and uh, yeah, my birthday is October 15. And actually, one more question. I sort of underestimated the amount of time to the answer. Um, did your family like kind of motivate motivate you to do poems? Uh, for sure, because you know my mom essentially sort of bribed me. She said, uh, "I'll buy you all the poetry books." That you books that you went, she kind of got the more expensive end of the deal because I am writing tons of poems and she has probably bought me like hundreds of dollars worth of poetry books. So I don't know if she regrets that though. Uh, and so actually, it's been a very good thing that I started writing poetry. Definitely, my family was very supportive. They didn't tell me how bad my poems were when I first started, uh, which is actually a good thing because you do a lot of learning uh, just as you continue to write and you look back at your writing and you think, wow, I could have really improved. So yeah, my family has been incredibly supportive. And uh, it's really great to have the support of your family and your friends. And so definitely um, share your poems with someone who can will support you, your teacher, your family, or whoever. And it's a great thing to be able to share your poems like by reading them out or uh, posting them online or something uh, once you feel like confident in doing so. Okay, well, thank you all very much. I really appreciate talking to you and uh, about poetry. I hope that you guys go home and start writing your own poems. And remember that poems don't have to be long. They could be hundreds of pages or they could be two lines. There is actually a type of poetry called the couplet. So if writing long poems is not for you, you can write a poem like hum dee dee dum goes the drum, some sing along and hum. Yeah, that's actually a poem. So, uh, oh, I see someone raising hand. I can do one more question. <laughs> Okay, did you see us? Did oh, I? Yes, I've been seeing you the whole time. Yes, yes. Hello. Um, yeah, just like you're seeing me. Right? You guys are seeing me? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I have been seeing you. I can um, see everything that's going on. So, yeah, th uh, that's what video conferencing is about. Well, does the teacher have any last questions or comments? No, thank you very okay. much. Okay, well, thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your comments. Oh, you can do that. Bye.